on live it's 10 p.m. Japan time I'd like to start the tutorial live for this week for Houdini this is called algorithmic Houdini algorithmic live uh, and this is the 74th episode uh, for this weekly tutorial live <coughs> okay and today's topic is to do a SOP based mesh displacement, a really simple mesh displacement using textures on top of a given mesh geometry using a, a, pro, a simple projection mapping stuff. Uh, what I'm gonna do today is to use a, the combination between the stereographic projection for the plane and together with some simple uh, camera projection. I mean you could also use a normal UV mapping as well if you want. Um, the idea is pretty much the same. Just adding this projection mapping for uh, a little bit of fun. Okay. <clears throat> so let's try to do this. This is one of the example I did with a pig head mesh. It's a bit heavy because this is this is created with the mesh and has a bunch of <coughs> vertices and it's using a texture to uh, draw these textures as a polygon on top of the geometry like this and texture itself looks like this crack like image so it can be used with any kind of photos so today I'm going to uh, show you how you can load the textures in a sub level and use it as a displacement map on a Houdini. <coughs> uh, using the same technique, I think you can just change the color of the mesh with a texture as well, or try to control those uh, for all those different texture maps. So it's it's the the things that I'm gonna show you today is just a just mimicking what it what you do in shaders and, but instead of shaders I'm just doing in a modeling level so that's pretty much it so the idea is pretty simple I think you have uh, a lot of you guys already have some ideas how you can do these things because the method itself is pretty simple, I think. Okay, so uh, this video is recorded, yes, and um, I the question there is a question in the comment. Like live mentioned in some of your past tutorial, purchase children. Oh, thank you some of the examples are explained in this okay okay so <clears throat> let's do this from scratch uh, first thing first I am going to download some of the image uh, from a website I mean any website is fine I'm just gonna use a as my subscription from my stock photo I mean could be any photo so but more high-res image you could have I think it's better because you can have more uh, resolutions with the detail so I'm gonna search for I don't know, any kind of pattern I'm just gonna try to search for the abstract Okay, let's see. Like these. Maybe this could be interesting. Let me try to see what kind of image I could get. 
This could be really interesting. I want to see more high contrast between black and white. So let's see how the how how's fluid. Like this one, like this one, I think I like it. This one is also looks good. Okay, I'll I'll try with this one because it has a great contrast between the the lighter brighter part and the uh, darker part so should be interesting enough okay let me sign in Just gonna download as a YouTube project because this is a YouTube project. Okay, so after I have downloaded, let's save this into a folder where I'm gonna save the project. Right, this one looks pretty big. The resolution is. Uh, 6,000 by 4,000 it's pretty big I think that's good enough <clears throat> all right and let me also save this file as well to the same directory okay Right, I'm gonna change the background to black and let's get started. Okay, so <clears throat> first thing first, I'm going to show you the, the, the simplest way to project the map, the texture image onto a mesh using a UV map. And then I'm gonna show you how you can do this using your own projection mapping method. Cause UV is the using UV is I think is easier All right so first thing first I'm going to create a geometry node and I'm going to first load the image as a uh, grid geometry using a COP2 network okay now I'm going to use the file node inside a COP network and try to open the file that I've just imported, I mean saved, onto a drive. Now this itself as a native uh, resolution is too big, 6000 by 4000 is too big I think, so I'm gonna reduce the size for now a little bit smaller to test out. Later on, I can increase the resolutions to have more detail. <laughs> but for now, let's reduce the file size. Okay, where did it go? Yeah, it's pretty slow. Gotta be careful with this. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Gotta be careful with this M1 Mac because it sometimes crashes the computer itself. Okay, and it sure did crashed okay I think I gotta reopen this okay let me just force quit and reopen the in this case the more memory you have, I think it's better. So let's do this first. Cop to network and file. I'm gonna make sure that the imported file has a small resolution, so I'm going to change the file size to specific resolutions. I'm gonna keep this as 1024 by 1024. 
as initial as the final imported size. Right, and I'm gonna save this one to the same directly. Okay, and let's load the file. Alright, so this is currently uh, 1024 by 1024 resolution image, which is packed inside a 1x1 one one rectangle. This is convenient because you can use this uh, coordinate itself as a UV value. So, but in, in order to use it as a UV value, it might be better to bring this uh, left bottom corner to the 0, zero, zero uh, positions for more uh, to make it a bit more convenient so shall we do that or maybe I can just make this at the center because it's still useful okay so let's leave this as it is and try let's try to use this as um, let's try to use this texture to map onto a any given geometry using UV mapping first and try with the color map first <clears throat> after you be able to do that then you can just use it uh, with it for any kind of purposes like instead of color you can use it for displacement which is the goal for today's life so I think the pick head geometry already have a UV texture map for each vertices if you look at the geometry spreadsheet for a, <coughs> a vertex you already have this UV value so I can try this UV out to map the color on top of this um, <coughs> vertices now there are a little bit to few number of vertices right now on the pick head especially if you want to use it later on if you want to use it for displacement so I'm going to increase the number of vertices a little bit using subdivide more vertices you have more detail you could get and the UV the additional UV will be resampled using the original UV so I think it's still fine hopefully from what I can see on the texture, it doesn't have any problems, so I think that's fine. Now let's try to remove the original texture using attribute delete. Maybe do this before subdivide. For a delete material, so that's gonna be wide out now <clears throat> in order to read uh, in order to sample the texture information which is right here from this texture uh, from this mesh using a UV value on the vertex you can use a what I'm going to use today is to use a U vex function called mm, frame UV or UV sample um, I think I can use a prim UV since uh, maybe not maybe I can use a since this UV value is a linear uh, UV value I think I can use let me check let me check I think from my experience prim UV is faster than UV sample so if you can use prim UV I think it's better so if you have a linear UV value doesn't, doesn't show yeah I think you have to use this UV sample in this case let's use the UV sample which is more versatile ok 
Okay, I have a question on a comment. Can you explain COPS? Is it mainly for composite in texture? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mostly use it to do tweaking for texture images. <clears throat> yeah, compositing. So I think your understanding is correct. Every node that I see here is mostly image processing related nodes, so I think you understand it is correct. Okay, so in order to use this UV sample, I'm going to use the point wrangle. Then, by the way, it might be better if I could bring out the textures on vertex onto a point so I'm going to use the attribute promote to promote the vertex UV onto a point okay so now I have point UV value like this it will be easier for the point wrangle to use UV Okay, now I'm gonna connect the cop, the texture created with the cop to the second input, and let's try to use this. Now, UV sample from the second input. The attribute name that I would like to get is the color, and then the attribute that I'm going to use to sample the value is UV and the actual UV that I have is called UV but in this case this cop image is in between the coordinate for X and Y is from minus 0.5 for both X and Y and positive 0.5 for both X and Y but in this case for the original UV which is stored inside a pick head which did the, the range is in between 0 to 1 so we have to make the range the same so I'm going to and this V at UV is the pick head UV value so by subtra subtracting by 0 0.5 0 0.5 you'll be able to get a value in between minus 0.5 to positive 0.5 for both X and Y now this will be the color, the sampled color value you get from the second input. Now you can just pass this value as a color to the pick head vertex and you'll be able to map the color like this. Now as you can see there's not much vertex available for the pick head a uh, bit low to low res I think so let's try to increase this sub divide to see if I can raise up the resolutions yeah looks better now like this okay so the idea behind the mesh displacement is pretty much this idea just try to map just try to sample the image from the uh, image from the cop network then use the image value or color value as a displacement value to displace the vertex to a normal direction that's pretty much it now it might be a bit hard to use the color value as a displacement value so I'm gonna make this as a grayscale image first inside a cop network by using a mono node like this so I'll make this value black and white you can tweak the parameter to make the mono type don't know much what's the difference here
Yeah, I'm just gonna choose one of the maybe magnitude. It seems like the magnitude is creating or you know, remapping the valley from zero to one in terms of the <coughs> brightness. So let's keep that at it and let's see how it looks like in terms of the color values not really so it goes over one so might not be a good idea i'm just gonna keep it as luminance and see how it looks like so it's from around zero to one so that's good enough <coughs> uh what does uv2 do I know UV is a vector, but I never understand what UV2 does. Hmm. Ah, uh, you mean UVW, <coughs> the third value for the UV. Hmm. Never used it, but sometimes uh, you can use the third value as a sampling, uh, additional sampling value as well. <coughs> when you use a some UV projection. Uh, value like I forgot but UV flatten sometimes it has a W value as well for some reasons maybe UV project forgot which one was it but not really sure not really sure uh, most of the, most of the time I just use UMV X and Y um, <clears throat> can this be used as a true vector displacement 32-bit float as you can acquire from zflush can it be written out as a vector disp m uh, i don't really know <laughs> for that i mean you can use the 32-bit <coughs> float by changing the precisions of the vector i mean the vex by going into the binding change the vex precision precision to 32 bit or 64 bit but I don't know if that suits your knees <coughs> and I am not sure about the disp MP I don't know what that is okay so let me continue Okay, so now that I have this black and white image, I could use these value to try to displace the mesh onto a normal direction. So let's try to do this. Or <clears throat> hmm. color map. Okay, and it, I think it is a good idea to have it as a float value instead of the vector value because all x, y, and z value is the same. So I'm gonna name it as value and copy the x value and use this value as an actual a displacement uh, value. Now I could do this inside here, but let's try to split the codes so that they'll be easier to see. Okay, so simply enough, I'm going to refer to this value to move the vertex into the normal direction. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. So, and you can modify the value as much as you want you could probably use a ramp parameter to control the curve like this and then try to move the point to a normal direction multiply by this value now um, you sometimes you might want to go you might want to displace inward other than outward 
so it might be a good idea to have a fit function as well to have a negative value I'm gonna call this min uh, disp and max disp or maybe negative disp and positive disp displacement oops what did i do okay so let's try to okay this looks like too much It seems like the second value is not really used for some reason. Why is that? Hmm. Okay, do I have any questions? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, let me see why this doesn't work. Let me check. So it did this one is probably okay. Am I getting this value here? Yeah, I do. Let me check the actual value that I get. Seems like it's zero. Why is that? Ah, oh, gotta say F at well. Okay. Alright. So it looks like it's working. It's moving the point based on its displacement value and by changing the curve you can also swap the di direction based on the color value and it might be better to have to remove the <coughs> the color itself at this point and but after changing the displacement you have to recreate the normal direction to see the correct shadows correct shading Okay, now I'm starting to see some interesting pattern. This. Okay, so the basic idea is just this. And what I'm going to do is to add additional projection mapping on, uh, for, in order to um, map the texture on top of the geometry instead of using a UV mapping like this. I mean, use, using UV mapping is, uh, I think it's uh, alright, but uh, I wanted to try out mapping the whole image as one continuous image, because you, if you use the UV mapping, it, you just have some island, the trimmed island for parts. So instead, I'm going to do a, a combination of stroke geographic projection mapping and together with some <clears throat> intersection analysis okay but overall looks fine and by changing those curves as well you can you'll be able to control these bumpiness like this right then having more resolutions you'll be able to see more high res um, the detail I think I can add I can try to add one more sub uh, subdivision depths here yeah see more detail maybe one more you could have more detail but i'm gonna keep it as no more than four because 
my PC doesn't have much memory here. Can I make this back? You could also increase the texture image as well for more detail as well. But I'm gonna keep it as it is for now. Okay. Uh, what's the difference between using the attribute from map node and the color map wrangle you did? Uh, I think you can just use the attribute from map as well. At the thing is that the, what I like about using cop network is that you can control the size, the imported size from the parameter like this and so you could also change its <coughs> its compositions and so on in detail inside a network so it has more flexibilities and attribute from map I think attribute from map doesn't have much flexibility even though this is pretty simple to use I am not sure if I can resize the size first of all let me see I don't want to lose the file so I'm going to change save it and use the grid is in x y one by one five hundred by one hundred let's see okay okay I think I have to change the projection direction. Uh, where is it? That is probably I have to make it as yeah, XC. Okay, am I getting it? I think it's calculating. It looks pretty slow, even though this is just 500 by 500. Ah, it says you need to create UV first, I see. And I am stuck. <laughs> Seems like it's freezed. Okay, is it gonna go alive all right oh yeah I can see it I can see it seems like but uh, this is still good and probably by using some of the parameters right here I'll be able to get uh, the image that I want or the information that I want like seems like you can also do the grade scale maybe if I make this linear nope <laughs> maybe in using some method <coughs> um, but still I think this is more um, more flexible to use uh, rather than using this way it's, this seems also a bit slower I'm not sure if that's it's because uh, of my environment or not okay but this is I think this just works as it is as well okay I mean, you could just directly map the textures onto a pig head using attribute from map for sure as well. That might be easier if you're just using the UV mapping. <clears throat> right? So, so instead of using the UV map, I let I would like to I would like to show you another way to do the mapping <clears throat> instead of the UV. 
So let's assume that your geometry doesn't really have an initial UV value like sphere. Let me show up the edges. Now this one doesn't really have a UVs. I mean you could still create it using something like UV flatten or so, but let's assume we don't have those and you want to apply some mapping on top of the sphere. Okay. And what I would like to do what is to try to project the textures on top of the sphere using a camera projection mean, meaning that if you're watching from this view then you project you're trying to project the image like from this view to a sphere but instead of just projecting the image uh, to as a um, parallel direction <coughs> A straight direction instead of the, uh, using that I would like to project the image combining this geographic projection and if you search for stereo stereographic mapping it's a, a technique for conformal mapping which is also used for UV mapping as well uh, which can be used to fold the plane to sphere. So this from the disk, uh, let's say you have a disk, you can project or you can map this disk like this sphere or vice versa. You can uh, <coughs> open up or you can conver convert the sphere onto uh, to a disk by using a projection <coughs> function like this and it is used for a algorithm it, it is used for a technique for conformal mapping which is used for uh, the UV mapping for CGs for computer graphics one of the, the essential mapping technique so I'm gonna. I'm just going to use this um, function right here, the equations right here, to try to create a simple, really simple, stereographic projection mapping for a plane to create a a sphere-like shape from a disk or a sphere-like shape from a plane. I'm going to use the plane because since we want, I can. Um, it'll be easier for a. I don't know, maybe using disk is also fine. But uh, since we're going to import the image as a rectangle, maybe using a disk, I mean using a rectangle to map onto a sphere is a good idea. So what I'm going to do is to try to deform this rectangle image that I have from the copper image as a sphere. So wrap this rectangle to a sphere using this equation. See how this works. Okay, it's a bit slow right now with the texture image, so let me have a no controller to have to control the size of the image so that as a testing I can go with the really low res image and then raise up the resolution later for the final look. I'm gonna name as text res from one to four thousand. Maybe four thousand is too big, but let's say it's fine. I'm gonna keep this as 512 for testing. Go inside and paste the resolutions to right here X 
and y. It's easier to keep the width and height equal to the same uh, value because after all you're just going to uh, you don't really matter it doesn't really matter about the, <coughs> the aspect ratio because you're just going to sample it using uh, UV sample or any other method so a bean squares doesn't really matter <coughs> So, uh, what was I going? So, I'm going to try to do the projection mapping or stereographic mapping. Okay, and let's check this coordinate. This is the 2D coordinate X and Y, and this is the 3D coordinate small uh, lowercase x y z so i can use this one to get the lower equations to get the 3d coordinate which is on the sphere from a 2d plane so this um, capital x and capital y is the the coordinate on 2d plane <coughs> so i already have that from here which is the actual point coordinate x and y so let's try to create those lowercase x uh, lower x and y and z using these equations so for x is 2 multiplied by at p maybe I can first get the position from at p because later on I would like to scale this to change the size of the sphere. Okay, so 2 by position divided by this one. 1 plus pos dot x multiplied by pos dot x plus pos dot y multiplied by pos dot y. Okay, float y is equal to 2 multiplied by pos dot y okay has to be to pos dot x and divided by the same value okay and float z is equal to minus 1 plus pos dot x multiplied by pos dot x plus pos dot y multiplied by pos dot y divided by the same value this one okay so now that I got x y and z let's try to create this sphere or using this x new x y and z value let's see how it looks like now you can see the plane has been deformed like this. It's not. It's the part of a sphere, and this, uh, the range of the sphere depends on the size of the original positions. Originally, the value is in between minus 0.5 to positive 0.5 for x and y. And if you if you increase the those ranges, you can also increase the range for this. Uh, sphere as well. So let's try to multiply this value by some multiplier. Let's see how it looks like. I'm gonna keep the range from 0 to 10. Let's see what happens. Now you can see that it slowly wraps, the plane is slowly wrapping like a sphere some point goes pretty close to sphere now it never closes I mean you have to go infinite in order to close the value so you gotta be aware that um, you cannot really create a the closed sphere using this equations I mean you could do that by 
making this value really high. Maybe that was too high. But at the same time, the the end part it just becomes too low res. <clears throat> you can see that these part becomes the edge sides becomes really high. I mean it's a bit hard to see. Let me show this in a wireframe. You can see the size difference of the edges on the the right hand side and the left hand side. This has more resolutions. This has less resolutions. So you're gonna choose the balance. <clears throat> I mean, at this point, you could also do the remesh to <clears throat> make the edge size uh, equal. And the, by using remesh, I think you could also preserve the UV value, I mean the color value. But as you can see, the density of the colors, color map is pretty much... Uh, <clears throat> gathered at the end part so maybe the the value this hundred is too big I think it's uh, better to see the balance what's the maximum I could go from here if when you want to use this projection or stereographic mapping let's say I can go until five I think it's still good enough So one thing you gotta remember you uh, is that you have more detail on this edges and more blurred, less res image on the backside. So in terms of the visualization, you uh, you have to keep that in mind <coughs> when you want to use this. Okay. Would love to know more about cylindrical coordinates and how to implement them in Houdini. Okay, well, I could try that later, maybe. Okay, so now that I have got this um, stereographic project, uh, stereographic mapped plane, which is like a sphere, I could then try to map this image onto this pig head geometry somehow the method that I'm gonna use is pretty simple combining this image uh, combining this mesh and combining together with this sphere I'm going to um, draw I'm going to uh, cast a ray from the center of the sphere to a perpendicular directions then when it touches the mesh then this intersected point you get this intersected point together with the uh, the color information intersected from this ray so combining those two information I can then map this intersected value to this intersected mesh so when you have a ray from this point to this direction you have this line and you have these two intersections and in this intersection you get the color value in this intersection you get the position so you just want to map this image uh, color value to here like that at the at this end there are no intersections so you maybe you can just map uh, or have a non Value, uh, non color value or just a negative one or anything. Alright, this is like a helmet. Alright, so <clears throat> with those in mind, it might be better to have this pick head going a little bit upward to the y direction so that it will have more uh, <clears throat> uniformed. Uh, projections so let's try to keep the this pig head inside this sphere bowl 
by raising this up a little bit. It doesn't really matter if it goes outside the sphere, it, it still works. But those part where, where the sphere doesn't exist, you don't get the intersected uh, values. So these part is going to be uh, doesn't have any mapped value. So with those that in mind, maybe you, we could create some gradational mapping image from left to right. So slowly having more displacement using the mapped image or mapped information from none to more displaced. Okay, so that's the result of the sample that I showed initially. So let's try to do that. Okay, to do that, we're going to calculate the intersection using these two information, two geometries. So I'm going, and we gotta calculate that for each vertex for this subdivide mesh. So I'm gonna use the point wrangle, connect it right here, and connect this stereographic mapping to the second input. Okay, so let's name this map um, value mapping. This is similar to color mapping using UV. So instead of combining the UV plus color map, I'm just going to try to use a single wrangle to map the value onto the surface. Okay. So the center point of the sphere at, is at 0, 0, 0, so it's easier to think the direction. Currently, the direction you want to get is from the center point from the center point to each of the vertex position. And each of the vertex position is at P and the center position is 0, 0, 0. So this is actually the direction of the intersection ray. Now 0, 0, 0 can be deleted because it doesn't really matter. So this is actually the direction that we're going to use for the intersection testing. Okay, so I'm going to call this direction and normalize this. Now let's do the intersection testing. Let me go back to the x function to see intersect and uh, probably I can use this one intersect geometry original position direction output position and output UV okay so output position I can name this inter pos and UV and inter I can now calculate intersect. Now the second input is the the sphere geometry, the stereogra stereographic mapped sphere. And then the original position is at zero zero zero. No. Yeah. And the direction is this one. And since you want to cast a long enough ray to intersect with the sphere I can increase the distance pretty high then the output value is interposition intersected positions and UV now in this case you'll be able to get the primitive based UV value together with the UV num number the intersected print intersected primitive number. So instead of using UV sample, we could use prim UV with these information. Okay, to get the sampled value from this image or uh, um, sphere with the image. OK, 
Okay, so... But we gotta check if there's intersect and intersection found. So if intersect inter value is e more or equal to zero, meaning you have found the intersection, <coughs> then you can try to get the color value by you prim u b from the second input. What's the function? And you want to get the color value at enter with these UV. Okay, let's check this. I'm going to directly map the color value to its point. Now the color has been projected like this. Okay, and as you can see, these end, you couldn't find any intersection, so no color has been mapped. So you gotta see a little bit of too strong contrast between these, uh, these edges. Now you could still move the pick head maybe backward to control how much you want to have for the these uh, margin but I'm I am going to keep the margin a little bit went too far I am going to keep the margin at like this and what I'm gonna do is to smoothen out these edges so it goes from maybe black to gradually increasing this color value so to do that let's see what I uh, what I could do with these so first thing first I am going to retrieve a single value from this color just get the X value okay <clears throat> and let's say I'm going to define this variable outside if uh, conditions like this and then apply it as color value outside if coordinate now you still want to have a more gradational like blending at the edge so in order to achieve that you might have to have some gradational value going from the edge of this plane to the center of this plane. To do that, we could go back to the original cop image and see what kind of information we can have as additional information. Now in this case, if the vertex is close to the edge of this texture image, which is this boundary, we want to have the value close to zero. When the point goes close to the center, then we could have more uh, value close to one or multiply with this original image. So what we could do is to have additional like gradational value goes from zero to one from border to the center. Okay, to do that, we need to have a border information which in this case this is a grid one is which is called one by one so we could create that easily by creating another grid here which is xy which is one by one half and make it as a wireframe or a curve geometry. Now we can use this curve geometry to calculate the distance from each of the point at the texture to here. Then use this distance information to <clears throat> use it for a gradational value. Okay, so let's we can have that we can have that information inside a texture I think. So let's try to 
get that. So for each texture point position, we're going to calculate the distance from each point like these to this boundary edge curve and map that distance as a gradational value. So edge gradation or edge distance. And uh, it's pretty simple. You can just use the function called x, y, z dist, which will get the minimum distance between the <coughs> selected primitive between the selected position okay let's check this out so in this case the maximum should be 0.5 or, um, yeah 0.5 and the minimum should be equal to zero so let's see so currently yeah as I assumed the value that I got is in between 0 to 0.5. Now it'll be easier to use if the range is in between 0 to 1, so let's multiply this by 2 so that you'll be able to have a value in between 0 to 1. Okay, so now the edge distance is in between 0 to 1, like this. Okay, we can test this value by directly multiplying this edge distance to a color value if we can get the gradational color map at this point. Like this. Now, as you can see, more closer to the border, you get darker value, and then got closer to the center, you get more brighter color. All right, looks good. But I don't do this. I don't want to do this inside here. But I, I want to do this later when we do the value mapping, <clears throat> so that we can actually see it together with the displacement. Okay, like this. Okay, now going back to the value mapping. We could then um, get the the edge distance from the second input, just like it did with this prim UV. So let's have that, which is called as float edge dist. Okay, so. Edge, edge this is equal to prim uv from the second input edge this enter uv okay now i'm going to map this value as another edge dist to a these big head geometry as an additional information Right. Okay, now at this point, maybe I can tweak this value together with this edge distance uh, to see the, to change this gradational value right here. So, let's test this out. So what I want to do now is to, this value itself currently is just a directly sampled color value but by multiplying this by this edge distance you'll be able to see more uh, gradational value like this but this is a linear gradational value so you might want to use the ramp parameter <coughs> to control the how much you want to change from the edge to the center So I'm going to use the CH ramp for this edge distance. The 
since edge distance is currently in between 0 to 1, I can just use the chramp as it is. And by changing this value right here, You'll be able to see how much you want to blend the uh, the edge of this mapping, and later on how you want to map it for the the right hand side part, like this. Now you can check this together with the <coughs> the real mesh displacement later, and for now let's keep it as it is. And yep, and I think last time I was splitting the the map and displacement differently, but I'm not sure if I should do the same. Let's do the similar things that I did here. Yeah, I think we should do it separately because for less confusion so in this case I have just changed the the displacement map value map uh, sample from the <coughs> still graphic projected sphere okay then I'm gonna and store it as a color value maybe I can store it as flow value as well and I don't actually need to map the color itself but for debugging it's useful so let's keep that and then I can use another point wrangle for displacement and this one is pretty much the same as this one so I'm going to copy what I have right here or maybe I can just copy the node itself And let's see if I have these. Okay, I think this is good. And I also need the normal direction. As you can see, in this case, we have we have more gradational displacement mapping from left to right. Left hand left hand side has more smaller displacement. Right hand side you have more higher displacement if you look at this part looks more interesting maybe I want to have a different direction in terms of the displacement so I'm going to flip this curve like this Okay, and we I can also go back here to see what I can do with this edge gradation. If you more, if you want to have more smoother, uh, <coughs> how do I say smoother gradation? Maybe you can use it. Try to make it linear as possible, or make it like these. If you want to have exaggerated displacement on the back side, you can do it like this. Starting to make, starting to become really interesting. Okay. And we could also control the minimum and maximum. I mean, for the negative direction. In positive direction. All right. Now, as you can see, there's a bit of problem with these edges, so we w I'm going to fix it by converting into a BDB, then convert back into uh, polygon for final retouch. But for now, let me try to increase the resolutions of the mesh. Maybe I can have a 
subdivide resolutions right here as well. Sub D res. Maybe I can go from zero to five. Let's try with four. Okay, I can see more high res image trying to pop up. Start to pop up, and if I erase up the re resolutions of the textures, let's see if I if it could also could change. Yeah, have more detail like this. You could also go inside a cop network to change the sample, the original sampling. Currently, it's box filter. If you have more, if you want to have more smoother, like volume between pixels, maybe you can use this uh, instead of the box. Maybe Gaussian, Katmal ROM or something like that, or Michel. Maybe Gaussian. Be able to have a bit more smoother. Uh, pixel sampling. Not much changes, but that's good. Okay. Now, um, if you would like to get more smoother value, <coughs> uh, especially in this case, yeah, I have a little bit of jaggy pointy meshes right here you could blur this out a little bit by adi adding additional like blurring somewhere in between right here something like attribute blur for a valve or maybe the color itself. Maybe it may be easy to see. So currently, you can use the CD as an attribute to blur the image to have a bit more smoother. value. Now, but see, I might be better to do this after value has been mapped to the geometry. Let's test this out. I'm gonna keep this to blurring duration to 4 and see the difference if I dash this to here. Now it looks like this. Okay, it looks too smooth in and out. This looks too smooth. Okay, if the iteration is equal to 1, looks like this. It's equal to 0. So I do see some effects reducing this pointy meshes. Okay, now instead of having the attribute right, attribute blur right here, let's try to use the attribute blur right here in between the mapping and displacement for the value. Now this gives a bit more smoother value, even though the iteration is equal to one. It looks smoother than this one with the same iteration so maybe I can go with this one instead yeah I, the back side looks interesting all right now in order to fix those flipped meshes let's try to do the BDB conversion. Now you could also make this displacement to zero 
Although, maybe having a little bit of negative displacement is the... looks better. If you don't want to affect much on the... on the nose side, maybe you could still use the... the edge. Um, edge distance value right here which is currently has not been transferred so hmm. maybe after all doing all those calculations inside the displacement might make more sense okay so let me try to change this things a little bit uh, currently I have this edge distance right here. I'm going to try to pass this edge distance as an attribute. And then I'm not going to multiply this at this point. And maybe I don't really need to do the ramp right here, but maybe I can just do this together inside the displacement. Will it also be easier to control? Okay. Now I think this is good. And this is fine in terms of the attribute blur. Now going here, we can then bring out this edge distance from the attribute and somehow multiply it together with with this and I could use the another ramp parameter here and multiplying this edge distance with this in this case I can control the how much it deforms on the the noise noise part the nose part so in this case the nose part won't be affected anymore because I'm multiplying this edge distance right after right after I have fit the the color map value this makes more sense looks good looks better all right now i still need to fix these so let's then convert this into a vdb vdb from polygon make this as much higher as is enough uh, as possible. Oops. What's this? Okay, looking good. Maybe that was too high. Uh, maybe three. <clears throat> then, at this point, you could also apply some VDB smooth, but I'm not gonna do that because I have already smoothed and I'm using this attribute blur. So I probably don't need it. And not this one. BDV convert convert back to a polygon. Now if you just convert it right back to a polygon, the number of vertices is too much. So I can increase the adaptivity a little bit. To reduce the number of vertices 
for not so much detail part. Now it's been reduced a little bit. Uh, maybe I can reduce the lid a bit more. Like this. If you look at it without the edges, it looks still nice enough. Okay, so this is the workflow um, that I tried out to create a displacement mesh displacement using a input texture to get the width some uh, random geometry of your choice okay let me organize this a little bit but if we're doing that let's try out another textures see another kind of effect okay let's try out I don't know. This one. I don't know how the contrast will be created using this red like image. So it might not give a better re value, better res result. But it actually looks in really interesting. Let me try this out. Okay, I've just downloaded the file and let me copy the textures. Let's see how it works. Now I think it's a good idea that if I can choose the image from this controller, so let's have another parameter called file file directory I don't know which one is which <laughs> okay I'm gonna choose this image and pass this parameter to a cop network oops why did I make this too I'm gonna pass this parameter to a cop network file right here. Takes a little bit of time. Now, this is what I got. Looks like an angry pig. It seems really angry. Okay, we can control this displacement using these two value. Exaggerate the displacement based on this these ranges. Okay, let's see. Is this still interesting? Maybe that's too much. What if I convert back to a maybe this is too broken up. Hmm. Well I I guess um maybe this that was too much. But we could control, we could have additional like uh, VDB component between uh, these convert from polygon to convert back to polygon to ex uh, exaggerate the edges like these here to uh, sharpen the edge. One of the technique I could use is using VDB reshape SDF and use the erode which will sharpen the edge a little bit just a little bit 
with the without the road and with the road you can see that a little bit of changes I mean, it's not really necessary but maybe as a a little bit of touch okay if you look from here it looks interesting if you look from the back might be a bit too much but you could still control this displacement using these curves as well if you want to keep the displacement value uh, <clears throat> pretty much the same at the end part you could still do that by making the curve like these Or well, you could even make this goes back to zero at the end. However you want. I'm gonna keep this back. So uh, let's also have these parameters inside a null node so that we can control these in one place. Okay, so Let's see what else we have. Um, <laughs> okay, for stereographic mapping, we can change this size for the sphere. So, let's go from to 10 or 0 to 10 currently it is equal to 5 this one I don't have any parameters this one maybe you could control the the blurring uh, iterations here maybe you could keep the value equal to one but sometimes you might want to have more smoother uh, result so <laughs> goes from zero to i don't know five Really, this is equal to one. Okay, now this is the important part. We have a negative displacement, negative maximum displacement, positive maximum displacement the ramp parameter for the displacement and the ramp parameter for the edge distance for a gradational value so let's have all these inside a controller gonna unlink <coughs> drag and drop these value this let's rename this max negative displacement which is equal to from zero to one it's fine i think this is max positive displacement max positive displacement and this is the displacement ramp and this is the edge gradation ramp well i can just say gradation ramp ok 
Okay. I think that's pretty much it. And more high res you have in terms of the mesh and the textures, more high detail you can get. And it really depends on the memory you have on your PC, I think. Okay, let me try to increase the res resolutions for the mesh a little bit more. See if I if this works. I make it five. Wait for it. Might take a while. While I wait, maybe I can look for. Oh, okay. It ended. Yeah, maybe I I could have used a bit more detail texture as well. Maybe I could increase the texture resolutions as well. Okay, so <clears throat> let me know if you have any questions. If not, I will just uh, end this tutorial at this point this is pretty much all I wanted to show to, for today as you can see the base idea is pretty simple it's just mapping the attribute from texture onto mesh and use it as a displacement and showing one of the projection uh, method which is the the stereographic mapping together with the camera projection okay looks interesting Yeah, I think I had the questions earlier um, if I could do the cylindrical projection forgot what was it maybe I could also try that cylindrical UV mapping I see. So choosing the plane, plane direction, and maybe using an angle as a UV value together with the height. Yeah. But I thought there were already some UV function for that. sure this one I mean if you want to do it in vex way maybe I can show you but only if you want can you demonstrate how to create similar mapping copnet so we can animate the pattern can you demonstrate how to create a similar map in copnet so we can animate the pattern what is the best way to start learning Houdini demonstrate how to create similar map mm, not sure what what you mean by the similar map um, you mean not sure what's the <laughs> what you mean by that um, demonstrate how to create similar map in copnet Because what I'm doing in Copnip is just having, I'm just importing the image. But I guess you are mentioning how you can create those, uh, how you can multiply those um, geometry based information inside Cop Network. I'm not sure if that's possible. Uh, and I don't know much about COP network. Maybe you can do this if there's a VEX. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess you could do that. I mean, if you mean by making the edge part darker and the center part brighter, if you mean by that, I'm not sure. Uh, what is the best way to start learning Houdini? I just started a few days ago. Any advice for newcomers? Um, <clears throat> there is a series I did before I uh, called Bex for algorithmic design, which is for beginners to learn a Bex from scratch. And if you only if you want to learn a coding in Houdini, if you want to learn coding in Houdini. Maybe those series might be a good starting point. <clears throat> only if you are, only if you want to do a procedural modeling using Vex, like I was doing today. Uh, I mean, a map looks like what you find on the internet created by noise. I see. Those in those cases. I'm not sure if that if it's the if it's a if it's a good way to do this in COP, but instead maybe there are better like platform to create those procedural textures like uh, substance designers and so on. I never tried creating this kind of image inside a COP network, but you could still do that using <clears throat> seems like you cannot really use the vex for so instead of vex maybe you could use a network like cop uh, vex no uh, bop network together with some something like noise curl noise and some mixing colors and so on but if you want to do the animation for the textures instead of using inside a cop network i think you want to have a solver i don't know if you can use the solver inside a cop network i don't believe so so it might be i think it might be better just to do, do that all inside a sub level using a solver to uh, procedurally create a texture like information in sub level using any attribute including colors cop network is uh, all, I think is only useful by when using when processing the image um, static images um, but if you are okay by using the timeline based information maybe you can still animate it but if you want to have a recursive uh, information recursive simulations maybe using cop network is not the way to go i think i'm <clears throat> not sure i'm not sure if you can combine the solver together with the cop network if you can do that, maybe that's possible. But still, uh, if you want to have more advanced controlling in terms of the tech procedural textures, maybe using Substance might be a good idea. But at the same time, I'm not sure if you can animate it. There is a Substance plugin from Labs. So you could import the substance uh, material and probably control the timeline by having by applying as one of the attribute or one of the parameters on the substance material. You could use it as a timeline to control to animate the textures. But I assume this is still slow. So if you want to have more faster result in terms of the animation, maybe using Solver. Mm. 
It's a good idea. Thing is, I never tried making animated textures inside Cop Network, so I don't know if well, I don't know the best solutions for that. For example, if I have the image like this one, this itself is already a bit too slow, even though this is just a static image. What's the image size? Okay, am I able to change the... <coughs> Okay, do I have any other questions? If not, I can end right here. Let me know if anybody have some other questions. If not, I can end the uh, tutorial right here. <clears throat> so this noise function should have a time-based value. Not this one. Turbulence, roughness, spatial frequency, spatial offset, probably this one. Frame offset, maybe this one. Okay, so maybe by controlling this value, you could still animate the textures. And by combining this noise value together with some all those compositing node, you'll be able, you might be able to create those texture uh, look outlook. But these one, like these one, I. Th I think you still need to do a recursive calculations like this kind of painting like style and so on. a lot of a lot of textures you see which looks really interesting like this one is done recursively I think just like a fluid simulation so I'm not sure if you can do it procedurally without you using any um, valued created last frame meaning recursive recursion <clears throat> yeah like Baker said yeah I think it's good to create these into the flute system yeah I agree Okay, so hopefully you find this interesting. I mean, the system itself is pretty straightforward, pretty pretty easy to recreate. The idea itself is simple, not that special. I mean, I saw. Uh, someone mentioned in the comment in YouTube uh, that there is a one called volume displacement which looks really cool but I couldn't figure out how I could do this using a polygon the initial goal was to recreate this using a polygon but couldn't really do this this one, this is using, this is not a polygon, but this is using a volume shader, so the method is totally different. And couldn't figure it out how I can do this in a polygon, polygonal way. If I could do that, that would be more interesting, so maybe I want to look into this more, how I could translate it from volume to polygon, maybe. Right now, I'm just moving the surface of the polygon 
using the displacement map but I think this one is using the three-dimensional volume information to displace makes this more organic more high complexity that will be more interesting let me know if anybody has any ideas other than using like volume shaders right okay so this is pretty much it uh, let me also try this out with any um, other geometries see if it still works try with the rubber head rubber toy <coughs> Finger crossed, and what do we have here? Oops, looks too much, looks too angry. Yeah, <laughs> gonna reduce the displacement a little bit. so <clears throat> this is pretty much it um, thank you for watching I'm gonna try with I'm gonna state a little bit more to try out the uh, other textures see if I can have some interesting pattern like this kind of bubble might be interesting one now um as always i am going to upload the file that i have created in this tutorial live and paste the url and uh paste the url into the video description page of this youtube video and uh, so that anybody can download the file for your reference for the reference and the video uh, this live is going to be recorded so anybody can watch it later on if it if you find it interesting okay let me try to change the image what was that called takes a little while to update because this is pretty high res alright maybe I can do the other direction in terms of the <laughs> this is this goes really wild okay this goes too wild can go back here to test this out a little bit. Push the ball. I can reduce the positive displacement. Okay. Maybe I could also raise this looking at the projection graphic sphere. 
the center points is around here so maybe I can raise the rubber toy a little bit upward contrast right here is a bit too sudden I can then control this edge ramp right here using B spline <clears throat> Increase the negative displacement. Okay, starting to look interesting. Now I can increase the more resolutions. I can increase the sub D to five. See how it look. Okay, kind of afraid it's going to. Oops. <laughs> okay, this just done something wrong, <laughs> really wrong. Just gonna make this back to four. I don't know. I don't know why it happened. Convert this back into polygon from VDV. Maybe it's been smoothed out a little bit. Maybe I can also control the resolutions of the VDV, which is this value right here. And that will be the final parameter. Okay, so um, I think there are no questions so far, so I would like to end the tutorial live here. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll be able to see you next week as well. <clears throat> um, I might not be able to do next week because I have to go to Kyoto next week for the workshop and it really depends if I can get a internet um, network on where I stay if I could then I might be able to do it if not I might not be able to do so it really depends on the hotel that I stay 
But if it's possible, I would like to do another tutorial next week. And if you have any suggestions or if you have any like proposing, if you want any topic you want me to do, let me also know. I'll be glad to try that out if I found it interesting. Okay, looks good. And combining the technique from last week and this week sounds really interesting. Yeah. Would love to see the result for sure. Okay, so thank you very much, and hopefully, see you next week. If I'll be able to do the live next week. <clears throat> Depends on my network strengths. Okay, so this is it for today. I'm also doing the uh, Patreon page myself and if you like these kind of tutorials, I'll be appreciated if you could also support me in those. Okay, so right after I finish this live, I'm going to upload the file so that you can test it out by yourself. I think I'm not going to include the texture file because this is licensed uh, which is download from the Envatoil element so that for the image try to find your own image by yourself maybe from Google image or anything right maybe implementation of weaves in I'm stand in on old example with. Hmm. Okay, thank you. And good night. And see you next week.